Welcome back to our module on statics. We're going to shift gears now and move into uh, moments or torques. So a while back, my daughter was really into seesaws. And so, you know, I'm I like, you know, hanging out with her over at the park. And, you know, you have this seesaw and we're going to say for the sake of argument, it's, you know, maybe eight feet on one side, eight feet on the other. Yeah, I know it's a huge seesaw, right? Well, that's what we're going to do. But I found that if I were to, if I were over here and, uh, you know, here I am on the seesaw and here she is on the seesaw. What we found is if we did it like this, my side just shot right down. All right. It, it wasn't any fun for anybody. She'd just be stuck up at the top. So what we found was if I got really close to the pivot, put my weight right here, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm putting my weight right there, and she sat all the way at the end, we found that we could have, you know, a fairly fun time of going back and forth. I'd push up and she'd push, push up and then go back and forth. And for lack of a better word, it was pretty much balanced. Now, the question that arises is, well, where should I be? Should I be here? Should I be, why, why didn't it work when I was here or when I was back here? What are the rules that govern this type of behavior? When things rotate, how do we understand that? I'd like to take this session to review what we know, look at how we might make sense of this problem, and how to do these problems overall. Now, as a general rule, we're talking about moments and torques. Basically, they're the same thing throughout the rest of these lessons. I like the word torques. I tend to use it and I use this symbol. I will refer to it as a vector, although, uh, you know, as you may find out it's a pseudo vector. We'll, maybe we'll learn more about that later on. But for right now, we treat it as a vector. Now we know that, uh, let, let's, let's take a look at what, what does it mean? We know that force is the change in momentum. P is momentum. And many times we just say force equals mass times acceleration. Likewise, torque is the change in angular momentum. So torque is what would make a tire spin or would make the seesaw rotate. The way we usually refer to that is I omega. I being, well, let's not sweat it right now. Fortunately, we're in statics. That means we can cheat. We can say these are always zero because when we're dealing with torques, things are standing still. That's good for us. The second thing is, uh, let's look at how we figure out a torque. We look at the radius that a force is applied and we take the cross product with the force. So in other words, generally the way you, the way we've seen it mostly if we're simple is we take the distance times the force and that equals the torque. Um, we'll look at this more carefully, but I want you to understand that this is the actual definition and we will be using that. Um, we won't be able to always take this shortcut. Now that said, let's get one thing out of the way. If in this case, uh, I am pushing down with some force at some radius, Let, let's just say uh, my force is 160 pounds. And let's say the radius I'm at is uh, R, we'll say uh, M for me. Radius is two feet, okay? Now in this case, I'm pushing down. I'm trying to make this rotate clockwise. The way we look at uh, a rotation is something we call the rot right hand rule. I got this little illustration. Imagine you're making a hand you push your fingers in the way that something wants to rotate. So in this case, it's counterclockwise. They're trying to rotate counterclockwise. See this arrow counterclockwise. That means the direction of the torque is going up. In our case, it's going clockwise, which means the direction of the torque is going into the computer screen. The way we do that is um, uh, whatever this means that it is a negative torque, it's a symbol, and 
we designate that with a cross. If it is going the opposite direction, counterclockwise, we say that is a positive torque. And we say that that would mean coming at you if you're looking at the computer screen right here. Grace, my daughter, is applying a torque in this direction. And that is going counterclockwise, so it is coming towards you. You can think of it as an arrow, an arrow coming towards you, an arrow going away. You're just looking at the feathers. So that's how we identify if torques are positive or negative. We call it the right hand rule. Now, let's try and solve this. We're going to say that I am 160 pounds. All right. My distance is um, two feet. And we're going to say that uh, our H for her, her distance is eight feet. The obvious question, well, maybe not the obvious question, but the question I'd like to address is uh, what is her weight? How, how are we going to figure that out? That's what we're going to look at because we can learn all sorts of things from that. Um, well, let's draw our free body diagram. What do we know? We know that there's a force here. And there is a pivot here. And that's going to have a force pushing up. All right. So let's just let's just write this as a force pivot. And we're going to do force M for me. Let's scroll down. OK. Oh, let, 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 let's write in some numbers first. Um, well, we have what we need. This is uh, the distance. Distances are eight feet and two feet. Okay. Now let's try and figure this out. We know that the sum of the torques, nothing's moving, all right? So the sum of the torques is going to be zero. Now you might ask, well, the sum of torques about what point? You know, you choose this point. You know, you have this torque or this force, which produces a torque, this force, which produces a torque and this force. Well, it doesn't produce a torque. So that's that doesn't create a torque. Or what do you mean this point, you know, where you're here, this force is in line with it. So it doesn't create a torque. There's, in other words, the radius is zero. This force creates a torque and this force creates a torque. Well, the answer is yes. No matter where you take your point, the sum of the torques is zero. We can use that to our advantage. Now, in this case, we're going to choose a torque. We're going to take it around this point. I'll tell you why in a minute. We know that the sum of the torques about the pivot equal the torque due to me plus the torque due to her. Now, the torque due to me. Um, is going to be negative because it's going in the negative direction. Two feet times 160 pounds. Now we're going to add the torque due to her, which is eight feet times force due to her. And the sum of that is zero. Wonderful. We now have one equation, one unknown. Let's get uh, force her by itself. Um, we get 160 times 2 over 8 equals 40. Great. So we know that she's at 40 pounds. Now, we could find this by looking at the sum of the torques, but but there's something else I could have asked. I could have asked what, how much force is the pivot causing? All right, now you have two ways of doing this. You know that I'm 160 and she's 40 pounds. So you have a 160 down, 40 down. Well, therefore, you know that uh, from, from this way that the force of the pivot has to be 200 pounds, right? But if I ask this right off the bat, the force of the pivot, what is it? 
why would you solve for hers first? You want to just solve for the pivot. So in that case, you're going to say, we know that the sum of the torques is zero. I'm going to choose this point to rotate around, in which case her force doesn't do a thing. I'm not worried about it at all. All I care about is that these torques balance out. Now, if I do it that way, the sum of the torques about h equals zero, and I once again a negative, so it's going to be negative 10 feet now because I'm two feet from the center, 10 feet from her times 160 plus. Now, how far? Now, let's look at the pivot. That's the pivot is eight feet away. We're going to take eight feet times the force of the pivot. We simply solve for the force of the pivot, and that's going to be 10 times 160 divided by eight. What do you know? 200 pounds. Now, the nice thing about doing this is you can choose where to take the moments so that you can get to your answer quicker. In other words, if you don't choose it correctly, you can make the problem a lot harder for yourself, sometimes even unsolvable. That said, a basic guideline is choose a pivot that coincides with one of your variables. So in this case, one of my variables is the force due to her. So if I choose a pivot that aligns with one of my variables, I'm going to find out what the other variable is. You'll have to play with it a little, little bit, get it wrong, get it right, and you'll develop a sense of how this works. This covers the basic gist of torques. Moving forward, we're going to take a look at this more rigorously and then try and get a big picture idea of how to use the concepts we've learned so far. So in summary, we've looked, we know that the sum of the torques is going to be zero when nothing, when something's stable and not moving, and that the torque is the radius with a cross product to the force. We also look, got a feel for the sense of direction. I look forward to using this on our next problem, and I'll